Welcome back to the channel. Today marks part two of the installation process of the Darwin Pro SE Square GTR body kit that we're gonna be installing. They sent me their whole kit and uh, it's insane. It's based on the Senna GTR and it's just this mega track focused aero based kit that's just got canards that are massive and crazy. It's got a Senna styled front end and just the world's largest wing you've ever seen in the back. So this kit is so crazy. In the last episode, we actually got quite a bit done. We got the whole kit unboxed and assembled roughly in place where it's going to be. Um, that way we got to visualize how it's gonna turn out. And we even got some of the pieces installed, including uh, this rear engine cover right here. I love that piece. It fixed so much about what I disliked of the aesthetics of this car as well as the carbon fiber door seals. I'd open the door to show it to you right now, but the car alarm would go off and the key's over there. So uh, we won't worry about that right now. If you wanna check that out, check out part one. The goal for today is to get as much of this kit installed as we possibly can. Uh, we're gonna be starting here on the front end. We're gonna start with the bumper, the fenders, and the hood. Um, so I think we should be able to make quite a bit of progress. Um, we've also got the uh, side skirts that we could move on to, um, but in the rear, uh, we can't do this in this episode yet. In the last episode, I uh, was telling you guys a little bit about what's going on. So this body kit, you do have to screw into the rear bumper right here and here to attach the massive wing here. Let me show you real quick. Here's the wing right here, and it's got these end caps that come down, just like on the Senna GTR, and they need to bolt back into the bumper. Um, I didn't really want to bolt into this car. I wanted to keep it as original as possible. It's got a lot of, I think, collector's value um, just because it was owned by Post Malone. So I would like to keep everything that we're doing reversible. Um, so I went ahead and I ordered a replacement bumper that we can just use as like a sacrificial bumper, but it also needs to bolt into the rear quarter panels here. The, uh, what's it called? The swan neck mounting attachment here, right here. Here's how the wing will attach. I'll kind of line it up for you guys so you can visualize it. That's gonna go about right here. So again, we're gonna have to bolt into the vehicle for that. So I also went ahead, I found uh, two replacement quarter panels, got a really good deal on all of the components. I got those ordered, but they're not here yet. So all in all, I spent about $8,000 for two replacement rear quarter panels, plus the replacement bumper, um, $8,000 total. That's so gonna be worth it, just that added peace of mind. I'm really glad that we're doing this. I'm glad I was able to find those for such a good deal. Um, they are in very good condition, but there's probably gonna be a couple little scratches and things like that, but that's okay, because we're going to have to wrap the vehicle anyway, so it's gonna cover up all of those issues. Um, should be good to go. So anyways, that's an update on the current status of the whole project. Um, but I want to get started actually getting some stuff done, getting some stuff installed. So we're going to start with, I think, the bumper, uh, the two uh, front fenders with the fender flares on them. I love those things. And then the uh, replacement hood. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, already getting started on the hood here. There we go. Jeez. Off with the old hood. Don't do this thing so heavy. It weighs like three ounces. How's the signature like holding up? The jorts. Oh, you Everything. Can put that on your wall, Patty. Yeah, we're gonna mount it to the wall now. There we go. Moving on to the fenders. Nate's already getting some good progress going on that. Remove some of the trim pieces that expose some of the bolts, so we can remove the OEM ones. Let's take a look at the kit. I've got it all assembled out in front of me here. So cool. That's what we're working on right now. Just the whole front end. This is the replacement carbon fender. These are one of my favorite parts to the whole kit. Just such a cool transformative look that it gives it. You guys have seen the 765 LT before, I'm sure. It's got these same kind of similar uh, raised brake vents. I think it's such a cool, such an aggressive look. I like the mesh they've got installed right back there. It's gonna look so good. Trunk bucket ready to be pulled out. I'm doing this alone. Just to get the fenders off, it's quite the rabbit hole of just like little parts and things we gotta take off. We're kind of hoping we don't have to jack up the car uh, to get the fender off. There's some bolts underneath the fender here that we need to get to. We turned on the car so we could raise the front lift. That gave us a lot more clearance here. That way we can take out the fender liner. Um, but there still might not be space for it. Alex has been hard at work. You guys saw he got all three of those panels off the bumper and the two fenders. It's looking really good. We're about ready to go ahead and size up some of the carbon pieces, get those fitted. There's obviously gonna be a lot of fine tuning and adjustments that we're gonna have to make because um, you want those body panels to fit close together. You guys know, like Tesla, they're notorious for big wide body gaps. Uh, McLaren, however, not so much. They're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, um, but these are 
tight. These are very close. So we got to get that uh, fitment just right. That takes a lot of little tweaking. Um, but we've got a little bit of an interruption, a bit of an intermission. Mailman just dropped off a whole other car lift. So we got a third one going in. So we had to pull the McLaren off this one, scooch it over a little bit to make room for this. And it's all coming together. This is kind of the vision for it all. We're going to have the three car lifts. We're going to have it filled with six awesome vehicles. It's going to look so sick. We're going to put a wall up in the back there and then just enclose this whole area, get it looking really nice. Maybe put like a mural on the wall, have some cool lights, something like that. It's coming along. I'm really excited for it. Uh, but anyways, let's get back to the McLaren build. It's go time. Walton's ready to get started on the uh, front end. That, cool. that seriously looks like a Halo gun. It kind of does. It's like, I still can't remember the name of these things, but we'll figure it out. But it does. What is the it? Russian sniper? <laughs> that's what we called it in Halo. A Covenant Rifle? I think that's the name for it. We called it the, the Russian Sniper as a kid. Not a Covenant. Yeah, okay, well, he's going to be installing that. Um, that takes a lot of just kind of TLC, a lot of know-how. you got to get the fitment just right. So I'm not going to be working that. Just some wiggling. Yeah, Alex is going to be doing that. I am going to be doing the side skirts because those are a bit more straightforward. So if you're not super familiar with cars, double-sided tape is used extensively in the industry, not just for body kits, but like, for example, my Mercedes spoiler was put on using exclusive double-sided tape. So it's a very normal thing. I know a lot of you guys might be looking at this and be like, oh, that's weird. No, it's very normal. Um, here is the first side skirt piece. This is gonna be put on with exclusively double-sided tape. Um, but this rear one, as you can see, it has bolt holes right here. We're not gonna have to drill into it though. The, we're gonna use the existing bolt holes that are underneath here. So that should be pretty straightforward. Um, this one should be as well. We're just using 3M VHB tape. You gotta make sure it's genuine because there's a lot of knockoff stuff out there. And we're just gonna be going to town with that. Um, I'm gonna have to clean this very thoroughly though. This is very grimy. So we're gonna go through a multi-stage process for that and we should be good to go. Bumpers in place, that looks so good. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of adjusting we still need to do. That headlight's not fitting in perfectly, so we gotta adjust that. And then this light entirely is just gone. So there's the OEM bumper. We pulled those headlights out. I think, the, I think these are the turn signals. These are so cool on their own. They're just these blade-like little things. Anyways, those should be going in here pretty soon. Here's an update over here on the side skirt. So I pulled the uh, bolts out from here, as well as uh, three more down there. Um, so this will just bolt in place, um, but I do need to go do some adjustment to this. This is uh, just kind of standard when you're working with a body kit. They've got the holes pre-drilled. I need to go in and make them a little bit oval shaped to give me a little bit of wiggle room um, to get it exactly spot on where we want. You can see on the OEM one, that's how they shape them as well. So yeah, that just allows you, because every car is a little bit different, allows you to slide it back and forth and get it exactly how you want. All right, I did a test fit. It is looking like it's ready to go. Here's something I wanted to demonstrate about this kit, how clever they've been and how nice the fitment is. Right here and right here, it almost clicks into place. It's really interesting. So you uh, kind of get it in place. I'm putting this lip against this edge here. There's no way to do it wrong because it fits in place perfectly. And then with a little bit of effort, that almost snaps on just like that. So um, obviously the bolts are necessary. That's not just gonna stay like that, but that saves us from ne needing to use like double stick tape up here or bolting into the car itself. So just a very clever bit of engineering that I certainly appreciate. Makes my life easier and uh, leaves the car looking uh, good if you ever want to revert it. Cranking down the final bolt. There we go. I think it should be finished. Yeah, look at that. Fits super nice. It's on there nice and solid. Now let's check the fitment with the door. If we close that, it should line up nicely. Boom, there we go. You can see that line. Oh, it hadn't been shut all the way. There it goes. 
uh, line is continued nicely then. So that's perfect. And obviously the door's still shut, so that's great. We don't have anything blocking it. That is looking good. Side note for anyone that's worried, we will add some double-sided tape here and maybe another couple of places later. Um, but right now while we're doing the test fittings, I don't want to apply it permanently. So that's just why we're not doing that yet. We're ready to pull it outside. That means it's time for a Valvetronics Designs cold start. Hit it, Hunter. Darwin Pro, you guys have absolutely outdone yourselves. Of course, we've got our work cut out for ourselves. We've done a few hours of bolting these on, and there is probably tens of hours of fine tuning, fine adjustments, replacing sensors, moving lights over, all of that. So we're gonna do a bunch of work. Um, and then in the next episode, we're gonna be cracking right into the rear end, which is what I think is like a little bit even more aggressive than the front end, if I even dare say that, because this whole front end's insane. The back end's even crazier. So I'm excited to get digging into that in the next episode. But anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.